What's going on guys, Willie Stickley here. Today we're gonna to be talking about 10 things I love about the Atomos Ninja 5. First things first, let's talk about 10-bit. The whole reason I bought this thing in the first place. 10-bit color is two to the power 10 color versus our traditional two to the eight power color of color for channel. So normally you'd have 256 shades uh, from black to white in your red, your green, and your blue channels. So that's 256 times 256 times 256. And that will give you your 16 million colors. Now, if you have 10 bit, you get 1,024 shades per channel of red, green, and blue. And that's 1024 times 1024 times 1024. Now, that's a really big number. I'm gonna put that number on the screen, right there. And you'll see that's a lot more colors than 16 million. Hi, Molly. Hey, kitty. What's up? It's okay. Not ruining my recording or anything. It's all right, it's all good. Now with 10-bit color, you can do a lot more to your color grade and helps a lot with color correction too because you have so much more colors to work with you can pull your image a lot more than you can with an 8-bit image or a traditional regular old run-the-mill video clip. Now I'll show you some examples on screen you can see that you can really tug and pull these colors whichever way you really want with 10-bit almost like a raw image in like Lightroom or something but not that level of quality it's up there but it's not it's not an image yet that's where you get raw speaking of which next up we got raw and prores recording or prores raw recording for our traditional raw now why is this important this allows you to get 12 bits so even more colors than we're talking before image out of your date out of your camera and the data that the raw sensor data is kept from the sensor and put on your computer and then transcoded into an image. Because of that, it will allow you to pull your image so much more because you can literally change the ISO or the white balance after the fact. I'm gonna repeat that. You can fix everything after the fact. That's crazy. So if you if you really messed up your exposure and you're a, a stop or two over and your white balance is off by 2000, you can fix that with a click of maybe three buttons at most. That's insane. Third thing, why do I love the Ninja 5? It's a monitor. It's a really good monitor. Like. I have this, there. there we go. It's a 4K monitor. It barely displays a 1080p image and it can't do much. It accepts MPF batteries, which is nice, but other than that, this terrible button system we've got up here is really frustrating to work with. It's kind of like my autofocus right now. All right, so with this, the thing I don't like about it is all the physical buttons. You got mounting points, that's awesome, but the physical buttons are the death of me. The reason I like the Ninja over this is that it's touchscreen. It's also much brighter. This is like 500 nits at best. This is a thousand nits. I can see it perfectly fine out in sun and daylight. It's awesome. I, I've got a lot, a lot of things to look forward to. Speaking of which, we've got histograms and waveforms. Now, traditionally, we all know what a histogram is. Histogram is just your exposure from black all the way to white in the form of a wave value, which will show you all the gradients that you have in between your image. Traditionally, you want to expose in the middle to get the most, high di most dynamic range out of your image or high dynamic range. That is what you want majority of the time, unless you're going for a stylistic look in which you'll under or over expose recording. Now, a waveform is a lot more interesting. It's a exposure reading 
but it shows you the exposure as where it is on screen. So you can see if you're at the center right of your screen is blown out, that will show up on the waveform, it'll be peaking. Or if some part on the bottom left is underexposed, it will be in, it'll be in the shadows all the way down at zero, uh, zero IRE, and it'll be pure black and you don't want that. And so you're losing data. This allows you to help recover your data and make sure you don't lose it in the first place. But the best exposure tool of all would be false color. Now what, what in the f is false color? Like, what? When you look at it the first time, it's like, why is everything blue and green and pink and ugly and hideous and I don't like it. it. It looks even worse than log profiles. Why would I ever want this? The reason you want this is because it gives you exposure, but localized in an area, just like our waveform does, but down to the pixel of whatever you're looking at, you can see the exposure of it as a specific color uh, as that relates to an IRE value. You with me? Okay, good. <laughs> when you do that, you can expose properly to like skin tones, for example, you'll want in the gray or maybe even the pink area of your image. You don't want it in the red and you don't want it in the blue. Red is overexposed, blue is underexposed. It's a no-go. And if you do that right, you'll get skin tones that'll be perfectly in the mid-tones and you can play with them as much as you want to get as gorgeous skin tones as possible. All right, next up, we got this magnify slash zoom feature. This feature gives you the ability to punch in digitally on your image and to see, am I really in focus? Am I, am I really like crispy tack on or am I just missing the shot entirely? Well, with the ability to crop in and zoom, it gives you much more detail in what you're looking at and you can give a one-to-one -one readout of what is my sensor actually seeing? And with that, you can always nail focus and always get the shot. Speaking of how to get the shot in focus, we got focus peaking. Focus peaking is the ability to have a color outline your subject, whatever is in focus with a specific outline color. I always choose red, it's just what I like. It's also the default for most cameras. When you have that enabled, everything that's in focus will glimmer in this cool ass outline. And you can see everything that's in focus really easy. So if you want, you can focus on the eyes of the subject and you can make sure they're tack sharp and everything else is like slightly out of focus. And you're like, whoa, everything's drawn to my eye. That's cool. And you can do that. And it's awesome. Next up on why I love the Ninja 5. The Ninja 5 gives me an external SSD is what it writes to. So I'm not wasting the memory cards on my uh, Z6. And with that, I can use that for photos or for just quicker, easier videos saved to local files instead of onto the SSD, which is my higher master files, my higher quality, my ProRes, my 10. But what you're gonna need if you get that is you're gonna need a cable. You're gonna need a SATA cable to, a, or a just traditional old hard drive cable to USB-C or USB-A depending on your computer. I have a nicer, higher end computer, so I use USB-C and that allows me for quicker data rates and just faster uploads for, well, everything. Cable's like 15 bucks on Amazon and with it, it allows you to transfer all your files to your computer so you can actually use them, view them, export them, edit them, that stuff. If you like that, buy the cable. Yeah, so. Good job. Peace. Last but not least, we have LUTs. Oh yes, you get LUTs with the Ninja 5. What are LUTs? They're like Instagram preset filters for your video, essentially. A little bit more in depth, they switch around some colors, but you can think about it like an Instagram filter. You just swipe it on, slap it on, whatever, and boom, new colors. It looks cool, but what you can do with that is like, for example, I'm shooting on a log profile. It looks hideous on my camera. It looks really flat and ugly. And I don't know what's overexposed, what's underexposed, what's contrasty, what's not contrasty, etc. With a conversion LUT, 
which is given by the manufacturer, it will allow you to shoot log and then in a monitor, external monitor uh, or recorder like the Ninja 5, you can put a LUT on it and preview your image as you would normally so you can see the exposure, the colors, everything about the image as you would, but you're still shooting in the log profile, but you're getting all the appearance of a regular Rec. 709 image. So you get the best of both worlds with it. And also, let's say you don't want to use your conversion LUT and you want to put on your own custom LUTs that you made or have bought from a creator. You can do that. <laughs> you put the uh, Ninja 5 into your computer and you just drag your LUTs in into the root directory and you're good. You can put your own custom LUTs on it and with that, you can preview your own looks on the image already and see, do I like this color grade here? Or do I like that color grade here? And you can preview things in the frickin' 